on March the 20th, 2011, Emma Wilson beat her 11-month son Callum to death. She then posed for a selfie next to the child. I'm Cameron. Welcome to True Red Crime. This is the sickening story of Emma Wilson. And then later, I have the story of Tavisha Logan. Both stories describe mothers who take the lives of their infant children. I found a newspaper article, so let's get into it. Now where the story of Emma caught my eye is the location. This crime took place in the city of Windsor. Yes, Windsor is where Kate or Harry or one of them uh, royals in England, that's where they had their wedding. But why does this mean anything? Well, I grew up in Windsor. I went to school in Windsor. I know the area very well. Now I don't know for sure, but my guess would be that Emma attended Windsor Girls School, which is a very well regarded school. I went to the gender equivalent, the Windsor Boys School. Now none of this has any bearing from the story, but I just found it interesting that this crime took place where I grew up and I had no idea about it. Emma Wilson, who was 25, inflicted an unsurvivable brain injury on her son Callum, who had also lost sight from a detached retina and had multiple fractures and bruising all over his body. She played hardly any attention to the boy on trips to the nursery and shrugged off concerns about the number of bruises on his face. Two weeks before his death, Callum suffered fractures to nine ribs, his left leg and his right arm. What is wrong with these people? The injuries were not discovered until the boy was rushed to hospital after being found unconscious in his cot on the morning of March the 18th, 2011. Callum died two days later as a result of a severe head injury caused by blunt force trauma. Wilson claimed constant pushing and rolling of Callum by his then 23-month-old brother was the cause. Yes, imagine this. She blamed the infant's toddler brother. The audacity of this lady. A post-mortem examination revealed severe swelling to the baby's brain to the extent it had shifted within the skull and was pushing down on the stem. There was also bleeding around the optic nerves on both eyes and he had suffered a detached retina. The pathologist also discovered old and new fractures to ribs on both the youngster's back and front, one of his wrists and one to his lower leg. There was bruising to his face, head, chest, back and leg. In fact, Emma tried to hide Callum's existence from her family. Callum was born on April the 23rd, 2010. She became pregnant with the boy while having an affair with a young man. DNA tests later proved her partner at the time was not the father. Emma initially planned to put Callum up for adoption, but at the last minute, she changed her mind. My guess is she probably felt bad. My response is, you should not have felt bad. You should have got rid of the baby if you didn't want it. After deciding that she wanted to keep the baby, Two days later, a social worker noticed that Callum had scratches on his face. In January 2011, the baby's doctor also noted five scratches to his nose and side of his face and bruises to his forehead and cheek. Wilson gave the same explanation but insisted she did not have any concerns. Uh, the explanation that the kid's brother did this. Witnesses reported in the early days he had been a happy smiling baby but he became blank, emotionless, and listless. Experts believe that Callum suffered the fractures to his ribs, arm, and leg between March the 6th and March the 10th, 2011. The prosecution during the trial suggested she may have been keeping Callum away while he made some recovery from the effects of the injuries she had caused to him at the time. On March the 11th, a mother heard Callum screaming and crying at the swimming pool, and she noticed that he had new bruises on his face. Four days later, a nursery assistant also noticed a large bruise on his cheek and one of the mothers described him as being the worst she had ever seen him. Now during the trial, there were many witnesses and a lot of them said that Emma told him, Callum is my cousin. Emma did not want people to find out that Callum was hers. And I'm guessing for two reasons. Number one, because she had an affair and she probably felt ashamed. And number two, and more importantly, she didn't want him. Obviously, with the way she treated him, she hated this baby. 
Now regarding the incident itself, Emma took Callum to her parents' home on the afternoon of March the 17th before heading back to her apartment in Windsor at 7pm. At some time over the next 13 hours, when Callum was in her sole care at her flat, he received a fatal blow to his head and the earlier fractured ribs were re-fractured. The neighbours downstairs heard five or six loud banging noises which shook their ceiling between 7.30 and 8pm. The next morning at around 8am, Emma Wilson's mother dialed 999 after receiving a phone call from her daughter. Speaking to her mother, Emma said, I just got him out the car. He was fine when he went to bed. He's lifeless and not doing anything. He's making noises, but I don't know. Paramedics noticed bruises above his left eye and on the side of his mouth. Eventually, in January of 2013, Emma Wilson was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 14 years. Now, the minimum term of 14 years can seem like, oh, she's only in jail for 14 years. No. She has a life sentence and her earliest parole hearing will be on the 14th. It's just the European wording for these sentences. But one, she should never get out. Two, she should never get out. And three, she should never fucking get out. But I think the reason why Emma did what she did is because she hated her life. Callum was an inconvenience. For example, right? Callum would have been crying. Maybe he wanted milk. Maybe he needed... um. Like, you know, when you rock a baby, right? Soothing, right? Maybe Callum wanted to be held. This is all normal for infant babies. But she just couldn't be bothered to do it. She either wanted to go out with her friends, maybe go out partying, maybe go out to shopping. I don't know. But when you have a child, sacrifices have to be made. And she was not willing to sacrifice her own life. Instead, she sacrificed her child. Me, as a father, I understand sacrifice more than anything. I realized when my son was born, I can't see my friends as much as I did. You know, I can't just willy nilly do stuff. I can't just willy nilly go out. Everything I do, my schedule revolves around my son. Most of these YouTube videos are recorded when he takes his daytime nap. You see what I mean? Everything revolves around him because that's what a child needs. A child is a job in itself. A child is high maintenance. And I mean that in a good, respectful way. But as I've mentioned before, to help us with this, we have this inner maternal and paternal instincts of love and care and we remember everything of our children. So whilst kids can be frustrating sometimes, we have this inner love and affection that can't be described that helps us overcome the, the frustrations of raising a child. But it's all a beautiful process and Emma, the silly fucking cow, couldn't sacrifice herself and instead Callum had to die in her eyes. She grew up in a supportive family but Emma Wilson just couldn't deal with her own children. Callum didn't even make his first birthday. His mother consistently lied about him and why he was often bruised and injured. It ended one night in their flat in Windsor in March 2011. The neighbours below heard five to six loud bangs. They made the ceiling and light fittings shake. Callum suffered unsurvivable brain damage, as well as a broken arm, a broken leg, and nine fractured ribs. His mother, Emma Wilson, tried to argue that she wasn't responsible. Instead, she blamed his older brother, who was two years old. The next morning, Emma Wilson called the paramedics. Callum was taken to this hospital in Slough and then transferred to specialist care in Oxford, but they couldn't save him. After he was born, Callum lived in care, but his mother took him back, convincing people she could cope. Sentencing her, Judge Kramer QC said, you are adept at lying, and once you've decided to lie, you're adept at sustaining that lie. We've worked closely with Thames Valley Police since this investigation was launched. And as a result of the hard work and diligence of the prosecution team, a just outcome has been achieved for baby Callum. We hope that the conviction and sentence will in some way ex help his extended family come to terms with this tragic event. 
Wilson also took photographs of herself next to her injured son in the days before the final attack. She left court in tears to start a 14-year minimum term in prison. We now move to Polk County in the state of Florida. At approximately 5.30pm on Monday, November 2, 2009, Polk County Sheriff's Office detectives arrested 25-year-old Tavisha Logan and her boyfriend, 27-year-old Chauncey Gardner. They lived on Sunshine Drive North in the city of Lakeland. This is the house they lived in. They were arrested for the death of their five-month-old daughter, Shantasia Gardner. Detectives believe the baby was starved to death. Deputies responded to the residence at 6.02 a.m. on Sunday, November 1st, 2009, after receiving a call for assistance regarding a five-month-old baby who wasn't breathing. Emergency medical services had also been contacted and were present when deputies arrived and they pronounced the baby dead at 6.11 a.m. Gardiner and Logan had three other children in common who lived with their parents. When asked about her feeding of Shantasia, the parents told deputies the baby was receiving two ounces of formula every three to three and a half hours. The pantry and refrigerator were all full of juice, pasta, snacks and canned food. Plenty to fill the bellies of the two adults and five children who lived in the house on Sunshine Drive but not enough for the baby, it seemed. Only two ounces of formula were found in the home where paramedics pronounced an emaciated five-year-old girl dead. She weighed just six pounds. Shantasia Gardner starved to death in a house with more beer than infant formula. But this wasn't a famine-plagued region. There was no water shortage or crop failure. This was Lakeland. The family lived a mile from the nearest grocery store and in walking distance of two churches. Logan had Medicaid and received Social Security income and food stamps. She also participated in the county's Women, Infants and Children program, which provides some formula. Investigators even found over $600 in Social Security checks that Logan received on November 1st specifically for the infant. Still, Logan watered down the formula at a 3 to 1 ratio not the one-on-one -on -one as the label instructed. Can you believe that shit? The parents watered down the formula. Who does that? Who does that? They have children already. They already raised children. They know the correct amount of formula and milk and all that stuff you gotta give to the child. Who waters down infant milk? Logan told deputies that she never read the label. She said Gardner told her three to one was correct. What do you mean you never read the fucking label? You got four other children in the house that you raised? Are you this stupid? Going back to the paramedics, when they arrived at the house, they saw the infant who was not breathing. She was laying on the floor, her ribs and spine visible, her eyes sunken and her skin loose and wrinkled. Logan and Gardner never took Shantasia to the doctor. The baby was born prematurely on May the 11th, but released on July 29th at a healthy weight of 7 pounds and 8 ounces. Now the average weight for a 5 month old is about 14 pounds. Shantasia weighed 6 pounds. Yes, she weighed less at 5 months than when she did when she was born. Detective said that Logan told them she didn't notice her daughter was losing weight about 2 weeks before the child died but she feared she would go to jail or lose her other children if she took the baby to a doctor. Both Logan and Gardner were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. I don't understand this crime. I don't get it. You had children, you've been there, you've done that. The only thing I can bring it down to is laziness. It's not fucking money. And I don't mean to curse, but how can a story like this not bring anger out of you? What was the point? What was the purpose? What did you gain from it, Logan? What did you get from a gardener? Shantasia didn't mean that much. You've already had your children. You've got your child fixed. What if we did that to you? What if we locked you up in a room and for a month we didn't feed you? How would you feel? I don't know how I feel about jail and the death penalty and, and what kind of suitably harsh punishments there should be for these criminals, especially for Shantasia because Shantasia, like, nobody's getting closure here. The victim is Shantasia herself. 
there's nobody that's left behind that's going to seek some kind of a compensation for Shantasia because it's her very parents that did this to her. But the fact that they get to now go away, stay in a room for the rest of their life, which isn't great, but they still get three square meals, more than Shantasia. They still get a bed, more than Shantasia. They still get looked after, more than Shantasia. They still get social interaction, more than Shantasia. So even though they had been caught in their sick laziness, being sent to jail for the rest of their lives, to me, it just seems unjust. Why don't you guys comment? Tell me what you think.